In today's video, I'm showing you guys how to install a propane kit into your EcoFlow Smart Generator, which we will test for leaks, and also make sure that the auto start and stop functions work properly. Now this is a kit that we'll be using, which will have a load regulator, a load block, also some mounting hardware, along with a little through port, and then also the snorkel along with a manual, and this is all from US Carburetor. Now one thing I don't like is that on the actual load regulator is that they don't include this propane attachment, which without this and this cable, it pretty much makes the kit useless, so you have to buy this separately, but I will have links in the description of all the parts that you will need to make sure this is up and running. We'll go ahead and get started. We will need some pipe thread compound. I like using this versus the tape. And this is pretty easy to do. I'm going to reseal this bigger piece here. Now this is a 3 quarter by a 3 8 flare attachment. Now you can pick these up at the actual stores like Ace Hardware, Lowe's and more. Or you can just order it online through the links below. We're going to go ahead and just tighten this down. You don't have to bear down on this super tight. Just go ahead and get it snug. Clean up a little bit of the excess and then that'll make a nice bead all the way around. And then we can move on to the next step. Now this is going to be the load adjustment block. We're only going to be doing these two pieces because that's all you need. So go ahead and put some more pipe thread compound on this one. We'll go ahead and tighten this up as well. And then all you have to do is the other piece. And then this whole assembly is pretty much going to be done. We'll tighten the load block onto the load regulator. Go ahead and tighten this down. And now this whole assembly is pretty much finished and we can now start working on the generator. But one more thing we are going to do is that we are going to mark the load screw. This is kind of like a fuel screw if you're familiar with carburetors and more. Basically, we're going to mark this so we can count the turns in and out. And we'll adjust this later when we get it hooked up to the generator and get it fired up. So now we'll remove the side panel on the generator itself. Go ahead and put this to the side. So now we need to get to these two 10 millimeter nuts and we're going to go ahead and pull those off. But we'll remove this little tube first. This just comes off of the valve cover. And now we have a 10 millimeter short socket and then also an open end 10 millimeter wrench. We'll use the wrench first on the outside 10 millimeter nut. Go ahead and remove that. Now when you're doing this, go ahead and take your time. There's nothing like turning a small job and making it into a big job by dropping one of these nuts inside the generator and then having to go and look for it. Go ahead and slide the air intake tube back and now we're going to remove the stock gasket. This is something you want to keep for later just in case. So here's where we install the snorkel and this is actually pretty easy. It really kind of goes in only one way. If you put it in the wrong way, you're kind of forcing it. But we'll go ahead and install this and you want to make sure that the little nozzle piece that goes inside the carburetor is more out towards you on the other side of the choke plate. You don't want it on the inside of the choke plate. It should be out closest to you. And I'll show you how this works here in a second, but we'll go ahead and just slide this on real easy. That's the choke plate that's inside there. And you want that tube or the nozzle closer to you. And now I'll show you what this looks like when we go ahead and move the choke plate back and forth. And this is how it should function properly is that it will actually open and close automatically so you can still use fuel or use propane, that way the generator still acts as normal. We'll go ahead and reinstall the air intake tube and then just go ahead and press this back onto the carburetor. And if you give it a big push, you can take both of the 10 millimeter nuts and pretty much force them all the way on until they only have to be tightened down just a little bit. Now be careful on that inside one. Again, you don't wanna drop it because that thing will get lost into the abyss and then you're turning a small job into a big job. Now, when you tighten both of these down, don't overly tighten them. You're just gonna get them pretty much snug and then you'll see what the gasket looks like. You're gonna squish it, but not squash it. So this is pretty much what it should look like. And you don't wanna smash this piece here because that's the important part. Go ahead and reinstall the battery and then make sure that you get the tube back on top of the valve cover and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, this part here is gonna be a little bit more of a personal preference, but we have to route the hose. So I'm gonna just kind of put this over to the edge, make sure it's above the oil filler and also not touching the engine. And by the time I get this lined up, I think I'm going to go right above the W on the EcoFlow. That'll kind of put me in about the right spot. Now, they do provide you with this through pour. I don't particularly like this one because it is quite a bit bigger. It's also made of plastic, and I don't want to put that big of a hole. So I'm going to use some of these grommets. These grommets are basically, you know, an assortment that you can buy online. I'm going to use this half-inch one here. It should go on pretty nicely. And a little bit of soap and water will make this thing slide right in. Now, if you don't have any of these step drills, these are definitely worth their weight in gold. They're fast, they're quick. It's just a simple device to be able to drill a hole real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this past the half inch line a little bit, and then we'll do a couple test fits and then throw in the grommet and move on. Now here is where I'm gonna try to get the hose just basically not touching the engine, 
but enough room to also give me a little bit of slack to be able to move the cover back and forth if I need to, but I will have a little bit of slack outside of the generator as well. We'll go ahead and reinstall the side panel and turn those cam locks. Now we got to mount this, which this is the load regulator, which they tell you to mount it to the outside. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to actually do something different and I'll show you guys what I do. Now this is a propane Y connector that I've had around for a little bit. I'm going to basically just take off this piece here and I'm going to utilize that along with this quarter inch pipe thread into a quarter inch nipple, which is going to allow the tube to basically go on there. So we'll put some thread compound on there, tighten it up. And now we're going to stick the hose on there, but we're going to need a clamp. Now these are kind of called Oedeker clamps. There's a lot of different names it seems to get, but you don't want to put the clamp on that fits snugly on there. And you actually have to get the next size up, which fits a little bit loose. That way it can tighten down around it. Go ahead and take the tube and then put it onto the little barb. And then we're going to take our clamp. And now when you tighten this, do not tighten it all the way. You're going to do about a three quarter clamp on it because you can smash all the way through it. And then you'll end up cutting the hose. Okay, now we got to mount it to the generator. So I think I'm going to wrap it up here. And then there is this little slot where I'll probably run a couple zip ties through or maybe a hose clamp later. I'm not 100% sure yet, but if I was just to smash this up against it, I won't be able to slide the collar back really. So I am going to have to make some kind of a spacer behind it so it has some room. I'm going to use one of these tubes as basically a spacer. We'll use a black one. I cut off a little more than an inch. Now we're just going to slice it down the middle and open it up. This is basically going to create a cushion and also make a gap on the back side of this quick connector and then we'll be able to mount it to the generator we we'll use a little electrical tape first this will help keep the spacer or the tube at least wrapped around the quick connector and now we can mount it up here and this should give me plenty of room to slide the collar back and forth now we'll add a couple zip ties this will help hold it into place and then we can cut off the excess and now this part is pretty much done Okay, now we have to drain the fuel out of the carburetor, out of the generator. So what we're going to do is make sure the vent is open. We'll go ahead and rotate this to the on position. Then we're going to fire up the generator. And then we'll let the fuel run out of the carburetor. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So we'll fire up the generator. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to rotate the fuel selector switch basically up to this little mark that I have drawn here. Now what we're going to do is rotate this up but not shut off the generator. So as we turn it up to right about here, this is actually closing the fuel petcock inside the generator so no more fuel will flow. And if you haven't seen my other videos where I mentioned generator secrets, basically a lot of generators have a fuel shutoff valve built in and this will allow the generator to run the fuel out of the carburetor. Okay, so now that it's shut off, what I'm going to show you here is that basically on the side of this is how you'll set it up is that right now this will be like your propane position. So what we'll do is we'll shut it all the way off. And now you can see that the generator is off. And now when you want to run propane, you just put it to this position right here and only turn it on a little bit. And this will turn on the generator and have it ready to run, but the fuel will not flow. I'll show you again. Just turn the switch a little bit. And now you'll see the generator come on and now it's ready to go. And this will be our propane setup. That way we can run either gas or, you know, end up running propane when you need it. Now, when using a propane bottle, it says to use one that's two or three times at least cycled and not a brand new one. It will create problems, but we are going to hook up the regulator now. And this does have reverse thread. So make sure you pay attention when you're threaded in. Now, this is something I did change. I added a 3 8 flare on both of these sides, or at least up on the load regulator. That one is stock, but so now I also added this double 3 8 female. That way this whole piece can connect together and it's not on the generator. Now this doesn't weigh a lot at all and it's stationary and doesn't vibrate, so this really shouldn't be a problem. I've seen it done before in other videos, so I'm going to try it myself. So this is an extension hose that you would see like on a barbecue or maybe a fire pit. It has a quick connect on one end and a 3 8 female flare on the other. So this will go into the generator. This end will go into the regulator and it should be a nice quick connection and it's about 15 feet long. Okay, so this load regulator screw is going to be loose. That way it can change it. And now we'll take the quick connect and we'll put it into the generator and that's nice and snug. And now we're going to pressurize the system and then after that we'll take a look around and we'll see if we find any leaks and we're going to use this special little tool but we'll also prime the line a little. Now this tool basically is like a pin. It sniffs out propane leaks and more. So this is a handy guy that's ready in 30 seconds and now we just got to basically let it sniff around all the connection points. And this whole system is under pressure right now so it should be able to pick up a leak if there is one. We'll go down the line over here to the next connection point. Nothing right here. So now we're going to go inside the generator, pop off the panel real quick, and we'll make sure we check where the carb is. 
and so far I'm not getting anything, so, so far so good. Okay, so we're just about ready to fire up the generator. We're gonna go to the load block over here and just adjust this real quick. We're gonna open this up to about, well, let's do three turns. The other generators I've set up before have bigger engines and those are more around four and five turns out. So we'll just start with three and we'll kind of go from there and see what happens. So we'll put that at three and then we'll just kind of leave this all slightly snug. Then we'll go down to the generator and fire it up. Okay, let's see what happens. So I already primed it like I did earlier. Now we'll see if it fires up. And oh, well, okay, that's pretty close. So we're gonna try this again and give it a little bit more priming on the line because it is pretty long. So, and you're supposed to do this about, oh, 10, 15 seconds. So we'll give that a little extra and we'll go down here and try and start it again, see what happens. Alright, well that doesn't seem like enough, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and do one turn. And I'm not going to cut away too much, but we'll go to four turns now just to give it a little bit more fuel. And then we'll try this again and see if it starts up. Prime it one more time. Okay, back down to the generator. And this is basically how you would set up all of these, by the way. Alright. All right, well, there we go. Now that's sounding a little bit better. Okay, so that's about four turns out on the load adjustment screw, so we'll leave it there. And what we'll do is we'll add a load here in a minute, but while we're here, actually, let's just play with it for a second and see what happens. So we'll add a little bit more just to see if it changes. And you'll be able to hear the engine go up and down as we do this too. And normally you wanna go down and then up and just kinda see what happens, but so far, not much happening, so I think, yeah, we'll go back the other way. And then what we'll do is we'll get the generator to drop down a little bit. And you can kind of hear it here. And so I think we'll, yeah, we'll go back. And we'll probably just leave it right about here for now, and we'll kind of set up a load to get to make sure it's running correctly that way. All right, this is also a good time to do one more check to see if there are any leaks. Now this part should be under pressure, and then this part's under pressure as well, but kind of a little bit of a vacuum as well as it gets sucked into the generator or maybe pushed, but so far nothing at all. Make sure the pin is working. Should see this go up a little bit. And there we go, kind of up all the way to the red and pin's working good. Okay, now we have to set up the load adjustment block with an actual load on it. So we're gonna use this hair dryer to create a low load and then a high load. So we'll turn it on and get this kind of up and running real quick and let the generator kind of stabilize. Now right now it's just low, it's only a couple hundred watts. And we'll kind of let this hopefully go into eco mode here pretty quick. And then we're gonna go up and adjust the load block and I'll show you guys how this works. So we'll come back here and do the same thing. And there shouldn't be needing too much of an adjustment because it's already kind of set up for the low load, but all right, you can kind of hear a change there, but I think that's going into the eco mode. Now, sorry, this part does take a minute or two, but I thought I'd show you how to properly do this. But yeah, you can hear the generator starting to drop down. And we're going to go back. Now open it a little bit and see if there's a change. Which there's not. So we're going to go back to that initial setting to make sure everything is correct. And now we'll go adjust it for a high load. So we'll take the hair dryer, put it all the way up. So put it to about 1,000. And we'll kick it all the way up to 1,600. Which is about what I get out of this generator. This hair dryer is rated for almost 1,800 watts, but... I only get about 1,650 out of this particular generator no matter what, so. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing. You can hear the generator go up and down. And there it drops a little. And now you can hear it kind of come up. And there we go, now it's sounding better. So we'll go back a little bit. Yeah, and that's actually a little bit more back over this way and I think that's probably where I'm going to leave it. 
Okay, so now that this is pretty much set for the low load and high load, we should be able to be pretty much set up and ready to go and we'll mark that again and totally lock it down. But I'm gonna go ahead now and shut this off and then we'll let it go back down to idle to make sure that's correct. And then it'll go all the way down into eco mode and then we'll do a quick stop and let that shut off. And now we'll let it sit for just a second or two and then we'll go ahead and fire it up and make sure that everything stays primed and the generator fires up like it should. So go ahead and test it. And boom, away it goes. Okay, now we're gonna hook it up to a Delta Pro and make sure that the stop and start features work correctly and I'll let it sit for a little while as well. And then we'll see how well it does on that test and make sure it's properly functioning. Okay, so I took my time setting this up. This has been sitting for about 20 minutes while I got the Delta Pro out here and got everything hooked up. I haven't touched that generator at all. It's just been sitting there. This is at about 21%, and I have it set up to turn on the um, generator at 20%, so when that discharges, that should automatically start. Okay, again with the hairdryer, so I have this plugged in, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn it on start discharging and then hopefully the generator starts like it should after sitting for a little while and then i'll fast forward this as well that way we don't have to sit here and wait and then we'll make sure this starts like it should and then also shuts off like it should after it gets done charging so which i assume it will do that but we'll go ahead and see what happens here in just a second all right so anytime this should start oh there it went 20 seconds and sweet there it goes all right now I have that set up to charge at about 1500 watts, so it should kick up and ramp up pretty high. You can see it's drawing about 775 watts, and the charge is coming in. So it sounds pretty good so far, and it's going to be able to, I'm going to put this all the way up to a high load actually, just to make sure I can handle it, but, so there's 1500 watts already. And now this will start charging, and I have it set to shut off at 50% which is going to take a while, but I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video and also bump this all the way up to high charge. So we'll see what happens with that. Make sure it holds and runs correctly. All right, so I got a little bit bored and I was tired of waiting, so I added some extra power. So I'm charging AC at max of 1800 watts. And you can see we're at about 3200 now. And then also this is still putting out, I think, oh, 15, 1400-ish because I did lower it down a pinch because I'm running out of propane. So... Okay, back to the EcoFlow smart generator only. I disconnected and shut down the other one and you can see we're at 49%. So this should be at any time getting to 50%. And that little dual fuel there was doing a great job charging this up. And you can see we're still doing about a thousand because again, I was kind of getting low on propane, but, but I think we should make it just fine. Probably still have at least a quarter of a tank. And as we look again, this should be switching over any second. And this should fire up, hopefully, like it should. Or shut down, actually, sorry. And Oh, yeah, there it goes. Okay, so, and shut down. Okay, so, well, both features seem to work on that as well. All right, so what do you think? Now you have an option to add propane to your EcoFlow smart generator, and I'll have all the links in the description down below. I hope you guys liked the video.